Welcome to the D-List, the show where I list things and my name begins with a D. It's time for a Decemberween D-List again, and it's time to update the original Decemberween D-List. On December 23rd, 2014, I released a list of my top 20 strong bad emails. Since then, there have been four new emails, mostly on April Fool's Days, and they've all been fantastic. And mostly been long at least by speemail standards. So now I'm going to rank the strong bad emails that came out since the first time I ranked my favorite strong bad emails, and I am going to place them on my original ranking list. Let's get started. Number four, Speemail 206. On April 1st, 2015, one year after the return from hiatus, Strong Bad checks an email asking when he's gonna check an email. When are you gonna dust off the Compay and answer an email? Matt Massapequa. Wait a minute. Have I not always checked my email on kitchen appliances? Well, there was that one time you checked email under a kitchen table, so I understand the confusion. Whoa! All that dust compressed my old computer into a newer, even better computer! So the extremely brief Compe run comes to a long-delayed end as the Compe is compressed into the Lapier. But Strongbad can't log on once he realizes what day it is. What? April 1st? Oh man, I can't check my email today! And then it ends up playing like a regular Strong Bad email, just imagining that someone asked him what he thinks of April Fool's Day, and not when he's going to check email. Homestar, everybody knows the internet already ruined April Fool's Day. On February 7th, 2008, ironically enough. And the cliche internet pranks bring out Strong Bad cynicism and Homestar's sincere enthusiasm. A classic comedy dynamic. But it's the day the internet gets on the internet to make inside jokes about the internet. Especially when it's the sincere enthusiasm that leads to self-deprecation. And I can't wait to be so fooled when my favorite website looks like it's from another time period. Oh, man. This looks just like one of them flashy cartoon websites from 2002. No, shut up. I haven't done it yet. Insert a baby. Oh no, I'm not falling for that prank again. Well, fine, but if you don't, you're gonna have to answer the Keeper's Trog trivia down the line. And don't forget all the great fake movie trailers we get to suffer through. Yeah, fake trailers on April Fool's Day suck. Fake trailers should only be released during the Super Bowl halftime. I didn't mean to make two Peasants Quest references in a row, but it's never far from my thoughts. Too dangerous! Okay, but unlike that fake IGN Zelda trailer, this one actually got familiar actors we recognize from this franchise. And two dangerous twos, but that equals... I find it a subtly hilarious touch that the visual effects in this fake trailer are infinitely better than the visual effects in any of the actual dangerous movies. Like, not only is there competent split screening, but Ronaldo appears in front of the duplicates with no visible green screen artifacts meaning the effects are also better than mine. On the other hand, maybe there are no visual effects, maybe there really just were two home stars and two strong bads in person on set. It's happened before in female cutaways. <laughs> and it's happened to Homestar. A lot. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, I'll save you! Remind me to tell you about my Homestar is a Forgetful Time Traveler theory sometime. Dangerous four divided by two equals six. That math still checks out better than the my name is Tenerence love equation, but somebody needs to brush up on their rabbit algebra. I know that counts as another Peasant's Quest reference. We don't want to forget about the fake ads for nerd culture products that don't really exist. Okay, I'm not going to reference Peasant's Quest this time, because the female itself is going to. And you'll look rather dashing in this burninated peasant zip-up trench hoodie. So, to quote Strong Mad, This one's not my fault! It's only fake unless enough of you say you'll buy one, in which case support my crowdfunding campaign! I tell ya, that Think Geek Tauntaun sleeping bag was the point of no return for the commercialization of April Fool's Day. But Strong Bad ignores what the world tells him to do and chooses to remember the true meaning of the holiday. Harming his friends. No doubt making Andrew very happy. Yeah, 
I don't think we talk enough about how strong Mad is actually a sweet, innocent cinnamon roll. How am I supposed to get inside my car? How am I supposed to get outside my apartment? Okay, that prank on Coach Z made a lot more sense than whatever was going on with the Andy Cap hot fries. Hey, and look at that. Now I can check my email. All right, boxing gloves. Get ready to work your inexplicable magic. I check my email on computers. Ha <laughs> ha! No toast. Were I to add this to my original list, I would slot it right between number 14, theme song, and number 15, Japanese cartoon. That's right, I like this one more than Stinko Man. Number 3. Parenting. Released on April 1st, 2022, but with no actual April Fool's Day acknowledgement, this was actually part of a Trogdor-related pledge drive. But not for a hoodie or backpack. I'm about to become a dad. Boy, all of us in the Homestar audience really are getting old, aren't we? Turns out we all had to try out some child rearing in one of the nebulous health classes. <laughs> Did we for some reason allow Coach Z to teach us? The fake baby class assignment is a classic sitcom trope, and this is a fine sitcom episode, just going between all the subplots of all the different characters doing their best to keep these fake babies alive. We were all given sandwich bags full of banana pudding to take care of as practice for raising a baby. Usually in sitcoms, the fake baby is an egg, but you know, that's not specific enough to be funny. Besides, first they'd have to ask, where's an egg? All right, potential parental units. Hey, a good person is my second favorite sign gag we're going to talk about today. You all have your RHBs, or as we in the medical field call them, real human babies. I don't know why the babies have to be human when nobody else here is. Oh, sounds pretty good. Did you hear pistachio pudding? Bag of pudding. Have you heard the latest news? Not a bad pudding. Sounds like a pretty sweet deal. What'd you say I wasn't listening? What? I can be a one-man hubbub. This one's full of really sharp jokes. Like, so sharp they'll only be approved by 70s pediatricians. Say there, local proprietor. My co-parent and I were wondering if this is a family-friendly establishment. I love that the YouTube description elevates this to B-story. You have no idea what you're talking about, and I disagree with everything that comes out of your mouth. You lump of underbitten cluelessness. Oh, Marzipan, you should have dumped him again before health class. He could have partnered with Pom Pom on this project. Strong Mad, did you tape the baby to a tablet so you could play video games on a different tablet for six hours? A different, more expensive tablet! Pro. Even when he's a neglectful father, he's such a sweet little cinnamon roll. Is that the kind of messed up stuff you're teaching there at the Star Runner household? Okay, a couple years ago I did this dumb parody poster where I replaced Skywalker as a last name with Star Runner, and Strong Bad commented on it, so I can't prove that I inspired him to use Star Runner as a single last name, but you can't prove I didn't inspire that. Look up here, sweetie! Can you wave? Everybody say, the cheat! The cheat! This is the longest female, and yet not a single second is wasted. And so, Mike Morkelson, I, I don't know if that's your last name, but you, you just seem like a real Morkelson. And I feel like it may have been longer at one point, because this short that was released a little earlier feels like it might have been a deleted scene here. Making the sun rise out of some dives. And then in the YouTube version, at the end we get an easter egg with a very rare live-action cameo from someone who's not Matt, Matt's old boss. Next we got a crowd fleeing a meteor. If you could sprinkle in a few old ladies okay. anytime you're ready. Got it. Little late to be recording ADR for Weird Mageddon, but hey. Uh, next we got a courtroom, maybe scandalized murmur for added difficulty throwing a bailiff. <laughs> Yo, Arnold, did you eat my tuna sandwich? Ah, uh, rest in peace, Richard Mall. We spin our buzzers in your honor. Excuse me. No, 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 not D. Not I can D. hear what you're saying. That one was weird. It's really... Poppy peas. Unprofessional. Of course, Ruffle still has trouble with video embedded in Flash files, so, uh, the Flash version has a different Easter egg with the only Bubs cameo in this thing. But, I mean, Bubs dressed up as Alex Hirsch once, so it's kind of the same thing. Yeah! Shut up, Seuss's abuelita! I would put this just after number 11, theme park, and just above number 12, date. 
number two, the next April Fool's thing. On April 1st, 2018, Folly comes out of the rejected girl character files to pitch the next April Fool's cartoon, with audio that was apparently recorded right after the first April Fool's thing after hiatus. And then, and then there's a loading sign, and it loads for like 100 seconds, and then, and then, it, and then it loads for 100 seconds. And then in the middle, there's just a non-April Fool's related spemail that was only disguised as an April Fool's thing. What do you do to keep up your personal motivation and inspiration? And then we get, like, three overlapping but largely separate premises that each could have been their own female, but they all work together to make something truly magical. First, Strong Bat talks about typical inspirational methods. There's also that weird jocked up thing of punching yourself in the face to get motivated. But unless you happen to have boxing gloves for hands, I wouldn't recommend it. You can do a strong math! You can talk to orange juice! Oh, no strong man, wait! Whoa. Such a sweet little cinnamon roll, just wants to talk to Orange Juice. I hope he gets to someday, he deserves it. As for the inspiration, you know how people always say, inspiration sneaks up on you. Well, I like it to turn the tables. Then we get Strong Bat sneaking up on Bubs, which also could have been a full female if they explored Bubs' different ideas further. Ah, file! Yeah? Uh, folder? Yeah? Shaped vitamins? Now that's inspiring! They easily could have done another four minutes on this, but then we move on to the final conceit and the real magic here. Always beating and doozing, never cheesing or choosing. Always beating and doozing. Uh, Homestar? Never cheesing or choosing. Homestar! Yeah, what? You're in my house. Yep. Again. Yep, was. And you brought a boulder. Not me. Play tectonics. Homestar becomes a motivational cult leader. This could have fueled a whole new series on the site, let alone a tune of its own. It's utterly fantastic. Always be ding and do ding. You say that like it clarified anything. Well, it's for an inspired life, strong man. No matter what you do or where you are, always be speezing and doozing. I will say this cult still feels less culty than the Broternal Order does. You believe in the message now. I really do. Always be doozing three-day life cleanse seminar at Bubsford Inn and Sweets Conference Center. The extremely clumsy portmanteau that is Bubsford makes me physically uncomfortable, but in a way that amuses me. If you're not attending, you're gonna be... Lending your neighbor a yard tool, like a shovel, or a wake. Look, Homestar's methods may be unusual, but they got Strong Sad to beat Clapping Party. Always beezing and doozing and never cheesing or choosing and always... Hey, I beat the end boss. I would slot this right below Little Questions, which I put at number eight, and right above Kids Book, which I also put at number... Eight. I had two number eights on the list, and I did not notice for nine years. The top 20 females video actually lists 21 females. Literally nobody pointed that out to me, and I didn't realize it until I was revisiting the ranking yesterday. Anyway, here's a third number eight for you, I guess. And my number one favorite Lapier era female, Too Cool. The only non-April Fool's Day female released in the past 14 years is female number 207, Too Cool, released August 14th, 2017. Let's not make a big deal out of this. It's just a little strong bad email. Strong bad, I don't know why you bother telling us not to do things that you know very well we are going to do. Why doesn't Sonor Card Gage have a video in the characters section? Is it too cool to be on camera? I mean, Homsar just barely has one. Is it really that surprising that Card Cage wouldn't? The announcer's been around since day one. Where's his character video? Let's meet our smoking hot contestants. Strong Bad lists some things Card Cage is too cool for. Knowing dead animals don't make good knee pads. Good man, Couch Z. I'm ready to pay. I would pay so much money for a full Card Gage Sings Fogarty album. Make that your next nerd culture Kickstarter. Now entering the game for Team Knee Pads. Team Knee Pads is such a perfect gag here that I almost always forget it actually predates this email. It was a pre-existing part of Homestar lore that just fit right in. And it's only topped by the next joke. And being out of the way. Excuse me. Mm. Pardon me. Mm. Lado. Got a lot of, uh -huh. excuse me, I have a lot of. I can't fully explain why, 
but the arrow pointing to ladder might low-key be my favorite Homestar joke of all time. Where is Homestar going with that ladder? He's going to where the ladder goes. Just all we need to know is that Homestar has the ladder here, and the ladder is supposed to be over there. You can tell there's a sign pointing toward it and everything. It's just so elegant in its simplicity. Without it, the scene doesn't work nearly as well because we don't know the stakes. Why is it so important that Homestar carries the ladder over there? Who cares where the ladder is? But now we know that direction is ladder. So it is of vital importance that he carries the ladder there and it just makes his frustration with Sinor Card Gauge being too cool to be out of the way just all the more relatable and palpable and it's it's just it's just such perfect brilliant dumb joke writing being in a character video is not something he's too cool for i should know i filmed the thing dang so we get a behind the scenes look at card gauge's character video i got my camera all set up and now i bronk my own oh uh you want me to use this to record your character video Oh, so Strong Bad's been holding on to Kevin's stolen camera for no reason then? To say nothing of Marzaban holding on to his Trivial Pursuit 80s edition? The next day, this mysterious package shows up. It was some kind of videotape cassette, a short-lived format called Beta Flop D, apparently made for use only inside Tom Brokaw's house. NBC Nightly News anchors get all the best exclusive formats. You haven't truly watched Citizen Kane until you've seen it on a video disc that only works for Lester Holt. It took over 400 different adapters to get that thing to plug into our TV. So they play the video and then, well, there are no words. I'm Saran Cardgage, the lead star from Character's website. I'd like to introduce you to the family might could. The family might could, as in, you might could die. Thanks, package sirloin. <laughs> See? Card Gage is so cool, his character video probably cursed us all for life. And then we flash forward to either next year or the year after that, and there continue to be no words. Well, there is one word. We're gonna need to start talking about tertiary investments and ah, ah, ah. Look, all four of the emails we've gotten so far in the Lapier era have been great, but this, this is art. This is a genuinely unsettling horror comedy, and it's brilliant. And again, it has a sign pointing to ladder. You can't beat that. I would slot this right after number three, Army, and right before number four, High School. This is a top Five speemail for me. We did have four folds. And that's my ranking of the Lapier era strong bad emails so far. How do you rank these? Let's discuss this all in the comments. And until next time, this is Dave signing off.